presented by AfterBuzz TV, the starting point of Kathy Kelly, Sonia Deville, and Christy St. Cloud. This is Women's Pro Wrestling Weekly, the first online pro wrestling show for women by women, showcasing news and interviews with top superstars in the industry. And now, AfterBuzz's own gorgeous ladies of wrestle hosting. Welcome to Women's Pro Wrestling Weekly, episode number two, where we talk about all things women, all things pro wrestling. So we have a really great show for you guys today. We have Jazzy Gaber, alpha female, on with us. Very, very excited. And we also will be talking about a women to watch as well. But to my left, let me introduce my host. So we have the host and the backstage reporter for women's women of wrestling, Gabby, Gabby Loren. <laughs> and then we also have we also have Anissa Barr. She's the social media manager for X Pac One Two Three Sixty and the host for Mix Match Challenge. Yay, that's me. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. So let's get started. So we want to kind of get into uh, the news on how everything's like breaking down for the week. So we can talk about uh, Rosa Mendez. So uh, she's gonna be starting. I didn't think she was gonna come back. I thought she was just retired for good. That's what I thought. Too. Yeah, she yeah, had her shopping. baby and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, for my total divas. Yeah, and you she know, started fans. that fit mama fit. Yeah, I don't know. Does she is she still doing that? I yeah, believe, yeah, she's still doing it. But hey, she's an entrepreneur and she wants to do many things to make money. Why not? Yeah, I, I mean, think you also have to have stuff like that on the side, especially in wrestling because there are going to be times where you're not working or you still need that extra income mm -hmm. yeah so she's decided to go back to the ring so she's going to be doing um she's uh doing she's joining the maryland championship wrestling so she's going to be doing that i don't know i think that's going to be I, she wants to go back to WWE and her skills are good, but I don't know what her storyline would be. I don't know if that's going to be a... I mean, her WWE storyline, how she came about was she was a big Beth Phoenix fan mm -hmm. and she you saw her in the crowd every single week holding signs, getting crazy. And Beth Phoenix took her under the wing and she started from there. But now she's doing it backwards, which is she's now, did WWE go into indies when usually you go to the indies and do WWE right. after? This is something that I'm very excited to see for because... Let's, I'm gonna be honest. Rosa Mendez wasn't that great of a wrestler. Mm -hmm. She did the best she could. They didn't use her as much on TV. Right. So now that she's doing indies, this is gonna be amazing for her and see what she can do. And now she has a daughter. She has a daughter who's mm -hmm. gorgeous, and she could be like, "Hey, Mama can do whatever she wanted to." <laughs> like a Mama character. Yeah. But she was really good in the crazy fan role. I think she if was, we yeah. could have another one of those, whether it's her or somebody else. Mm -hmm. To play that or fulfill it. I, I think, think with awesome. her role in WWE, they were trying to make her like the next Mickey James. How Mickey James was psycho and crazy mm -hmm. with Trish. They wanted to have someone go crazy and psycho over Beth Phoenix. Right. Well, yeah, it's, it's definitely probably the best kind of avenue for her to go to because now it just seems like the competition's so fierce with the women on the roster now. And then we have the women in NXT. Yeah. It's just like you can't come not knowing you know how to you know take a bump so mm -hmm. we'll see we'll see how that kind of goes for us. you know what's so funny i really feel as though i cannot trust anyone saying that they're going into retirement because mm -hmm. we hear it all the time and then everyone comes back right. it happened with the undertaker mm -hmm. uh nikki bella now you know um same with rosa mendez and funny enough when she did her interview with wwe she said i think it would be impossible to give a hundred percent to my daughter and my business which is one of the reasons she went into retirement mm -hmm. but it's only been a year so what changed rosa i i think yeah. too you just kind of you, she's young and you you get that you get that itch and then why not like who honestly who wants to be an adult working nine to five sorry to folks who work in nine to five like I would rather be an athlete <laughs> yeah. for the rest of my life if I could do that. True. Yeah. And so. same with what uh, Celeste, who is known as Caitlyn WWE, she left the company, did bodybuilding. She had a really a, a sad situation through one uh, a year going through divorce and all that stuff. And now she's getting back in the ring and doing more wrestling. Mm -hmm. So you can't say never say you could. The thing is, never say never when it comes to wrestling. Right. And you kind of keep that avenue open. Like, for instance, um, I was looking at Trish Stratus stuff and, you know, how she segued to the yoga studio and she does a lot of appearances and stuff like that. Yeah, it's her own business, but she's still, I'm 90% sure, pretty much how she looked on WWE um, Raw 25, that she works out every day. But she works out yeah. probably more than the average person. And she's able to do that because she has her own business. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe with Rosa, she's kind of figuring out, well, I want to go back. But the smart ones 
kind of segued into, okay, now I could be an adult, yeah. but still not, you know, working for somebody else. So. Yeah, right. something we're all still trying to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> work hard, play hard. Yeah, yeah, work hard, play hard. Speaking of somebody who works hard, plays hard, Ronda Rousey. So we all know she signed her contract, but mm -hmm. after she signed her contract, she actually got inducted to the International Sports Hall of Fame during the 2018 Arnold Sports Festival. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, she deserves it. Yeah. She's uh, she's an Olympic. Uh, I think it was is it silver? It was silver or bronze? I don't. It know. wasn't. It wasn't gold. It was either silver or bronze. Uh, Olympic gold medalist in in judo. So I mean, she's a hard worker. Obviously, it's kind of one of those things where maybe this kind of time in her in WWE will erase those last two fights for UFC for her, where you're not looking. You you don't remember that because that's kind of the first thing that comes to my mind mm -hmm. is like she's a badass, and then those two times, and she didn't like recover from it. So maybe this this stint with WWE will kind of help erase people's mind, like you know, memories of that <laughs> ending of her career. I think it's also very humbling though when she went through that that she talked about it. Mm -hmm. I know she went on Ellen DeGeneres after and spoke about how it really affected her. Um, and you have to look at these, you know, athletes. They're normal human beings, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really humbling to hear somebody who's going through something and, and not at the top of their game or being replaced by another, you know, athlete to come out and talk about it. Um, and it really makes it inspiring for everybody else to hear that story. So I think more power to you if you could say I'm not 100% perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I did well. I was at the top of my game then, and now I'm moving into something else. And so I think this award was at the perfect timing and well-deserved. And it was really nice to see that Kurt Angle was there to support her mm -hmm. now that they're teaming up on WWE and he went to this, um, you know, Hall of Fame induction with his daughter. He considers a little Rhonda, mm -hmm. which I thought was cute. All right, and then Kurt Angle is a Olympian, so yeah, makes sense. Yeah, they kind of all run in those those same circles. Well, definitely, that's kind of the next story. So um, on Raw, you know, there's this whole storyline. We we're kind of wondering like how it's going to play out with Rhonda now being part of uh, WWE. So it turns out that <laughs> this was hilarious. Did you guys get to see Stephanie McMahon and? So um, I was, uh, I have, you guys can watch the Raw show to see my p opinion about that. But it turns <laughs> out that uh, Stuffy McMahon and Triple H, they are going to be going up against Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey. So that's going to be for WrestleMania 34. Mm. So, I mean, I hope, I don't know. I kind of wanted, I, I understand the, the reasoning behind it, but I kind of want Stephanie to be more of like, not run away from her. I understand the reason behind it, but it's just like, I own the company. Like, you can't, you might be able to out, you know, slap me up a little bit, but you, I can fire you. It's kind of one of those things, but you know, right. how are you, how are you guys feeling about that? The, the match for uh, April 8th. I mean, I, I like the matchup, but I do want the rock to show up. I'm kind of disappointed because I feel like there were rumors that it's going to be the rock and Ronda Rousey. So hopefully he does a little surprise entrance at WrestleMania. I mean, it is WrestleMania 34. I think WWE needs to go big or go home. So, mm -hmm. I think there may be some. And he hasn't been on in a while, because like, they, they first showed up together um, in San Jose. Was it two or three years ago? Yeah, so, I mean, that that's kind of what I was hoping for. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kurt Angle's obviously great, but The Rock is... <laughs> He's great, but, you know, The Rock is The, the Rock. The Rock is the, the Rock, so, I mean, that would be great. But you, know, you never know with him, like, you know, and how W... Like, they like to, like, surprise us when we think that they're going to do this. They're like, no, this is what we had planned all along. Yeah, and I think it would be a little premature to announce The Rock is in this match yeah. with, you know, Ronda Rousey. That would be ridiculous. We need it to be a surprise because mm -hmm. it's The Rock and he is a, a big figure. Yeah. Right? Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> I mean. What's your opinion, Zanisa? Yeah, Anissa? I know. That, that, that face wasn't quiet. saying much. <laughs> Here's the thing. I. I just very upset the way that Ronda gave Stephanie the Simone drop. It was. It looked really bad. It looked like she was about to hurt her neck, and I. I, I mean, and Rhonda is doing the best she can by doing entertaining us. She is training. She's. She's giving us a little taste of what she can do. Right. But I think that move was the wrong move to do because everyone knows Stephanie is not a wrestler. The mm -hmm. McMahons are not wrestlers mm -hmm. unless you want to count Shane McMahon. Yeah. But I feel like they're giving her an easy opponent. I want like like they should have done how okay example when. Back at WrestleMania when it was Trump versus McMahon and he had Bobby Lashley come in mm -hmm. and they had Umaga come in. 
and they replaced I believe it just they just replaced somebody I don't remember who right now but they should have had Stephanie bring somebody instead of Stephanie wrestling they should have somebody else uh, okay you know what I mean but like at the end of the day this reminds me of just like back in the 90s how it's just like Kurt Angle versus Triple H because they had a love storyline with Stephanie McMahon back mm -hmm. in the 90s if y'all don't remember you have the network go watch it but I'm just very interested on what they're gonna do after WrestleMania because she has the contract. Mm -hmm. How long is she gonna stay? She said she wants to do the hard work. She mm -hmm. wants to do this. She wants to do that. Then, I mean, let's see if you could go past WrestleMania. Don't be like Brock Lesnar. Well, they said they, it, it was announced that she's gonna be on the show week weekly. Mm -hmm. Right. So she's gonna but be there. leading up to WrestleMania. No, I no. believe it was after. after. Yeah, after that she's gonna be on the show like weekly until right. whenever. It, the stint is over okay. so i mean i think maybe if we it, maybe it's good for her that we that they did something like that because they put her with like an oscar or somebody else at wrestlemania like one think about like she's probably obviously used to crowds but the wwe universe is not necessarily you know forgiving at times right right so if we put her in some, with somebody who's you know seasoned but you could do in wrestlemania some, but you could do someone like sona deville who is a fellow after buzz uh buzzer here but also she's a wrestler and an mma fighter but she's That's doing really do. well like she's been wrestling for right. ronda hasn't been but wrestling. they have similar styles when they, it comes to they do have similar si MMA. styles but i don't know if they'll be but like I, I don't know if they'll. I don't know. You know, some people carry some some other people. Yeah, right, right. So I think Sonya, she's she's been in the game long enough where she's carrying herself herself um, on TV now. But then now to carry somebody else, that might be too much As, on WrestleMania. Like right. just think of the nerves walk like walking into that. Like that's just you know you need a diaper for that. This like, sounds right. like a writer's nightmare right here. Yeah. Because yeah. here's the thing, Sonya has her MMA background. Yeah. So that's the one comparison they have. You know, her and Ronda. However, she's not as big as a Ronda Rousey. Mm -hmm. So Ronda Rousey needs to fight with somebody automatically who can live up to her title. And I'm not saying like Stephanie is known for that in wrestling, right. but right. because she's a McMahon, she has that authority and that um, grandeur. You know. Behind Behind her name so right. they have to put her with somebody and to start it off with like the authority I yeah. think that's how they have to kind of get her in but not with a Sonya because Sonya's just starting to get her feet wet um, she isn't a major player she's not really winning anything right mm -hmm. now um, she might though I mean yeah I think she will yeah. I definitely think she will but she's at the beginning of her mm -hmm. journey so they're not gonna place somebody even though we love her because she's from after but right. <laughs> like and I, and I like Ronda. Ronda too I'm not like trying to diss her or just every man at all that's sure not no, I'm it's just not. Kidding. But like the thing is, it's like it's just overall. This is my opinion, and you guys can disagree. I think the reason why they bring Ronda here, here, so they could be on e WWE, could be on more platforms like ESPN and all of that. Of course, fun I think stuff. it's one factor. So yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just hoping that they don't. I just, I'm just afraid that they'll probably give her the Brock Lesnar contract. Uh, that's what I'm afraid no. of. No, because they already announced that. But just, well, definitely with the platform. That's what they say on TV, but behind the scenes, who knows? Well, I'm, well, I guess so. I mean, there's been a lot of, it's been through a lot of like um, because, press releases and stuff like that. Right. They said that she's gonna be there. So I feel like it, if they say that she's gonna be there every week and then she doesn't show up every week after it's been reported that she's gonna be right. there every week, like if they didn't report it, then I'm like, okay, because that was my first question. Yeah. But they reported that she's gonna be there every week, so I'm not sure. Like, I'm that just curious on what she's gonna wear. Like I mean, that's gear. the least of her. I know it's the right least of problem. No, I know. But the like, black leather jacket, <laughs> the jeans, no, I the understand. boots. But like, it's just like, <laughs> just. But that's also a, that's also your platform too. Is right. like your stat, your in ring gear, your music, all that stuff. I just, I'm just curious, and I can't wait. Like, well, I, I mean, really it might can't be wait. A, a, similar to what she used to wear competing for UFC. Yeah. Like, to that, to that, to that. Do you think it's gonna be like a two minute match? I don't think so. And here's and here's the thing. That this is where I now now talking to you now why it makes some more sense right. is that if we put her with anybody else, it it WrestleMania, the rest WWE Universal Crucifier. Right. So this match almost makes sense because at least Kurt and Triple H can carry the match and then, right. you know, Stephanie and like Ronda could do her moves and Stephanie you know what I'm saying? Like it's gonna it's gonna break down where this is believable. To an extent, whereas yeah. if you put them with anybody else, it's like I don't know about like you know. Then you have people trying to you know, it's just too much on that type of platform. I think it's Ronda started maybe in September, 
then that would have been a thing. Yeah. But it's so like yeah. she's we're been, already in March. But, yeah, it's and crazy. Rhonda, Rhonda has been training, you know, at that Satina Brothers for months. Now. Right. But training and being in like yeah, there's this term called practice champs where mm-hmm. you train and you look great you know, doing whatever on the basketball court, on the field, whatever. But then when you get into the field of play, it's a whole different beast. And that's where yes. your mental comes in. So you might be prepared physically, but everything else is not gonna gonna work. So I think now it actually makes sense that they don't wanna, obviously they're gonna draw the attention with CBS and everybody else who's gonna right. pick, pick it up, but they don't wanna, you know, almost put her out there to, to drown right because then that on the ego alone will will, will kill her so well would kill a normal person i don't know about Rhonda, well I mean, she no. struggled with her own stuff in the mma i mean we've heard it in interviews so yeah it could so mm-hmm. we'll 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 see yeah I, and I, I was actually telling gabby earlier before we went on air that uh this segment Rhonda reminds me of um the girl from save the last dance and ten yes. things i hate about you do you remember her name that actress oh with the big forehead um, well, Julia uh, Sty- uh, the Julia Styles. Uh, yeah, yes. Julia I was like, Styles. I was watching. I'm like, the way she got up with the way she like got up when Stephanie pushed her in that uh, ponytail and the facial it expression. Was I was Julia like, Styles. oh my god, you guys could be twins. But hey, overall, I'm I'm really excited for this match. I'm gonna. I'm just just very skeptical on what what they're gonna do with it because it could go either other way yeah well just so i don't know if you guys didn't watch raw um i did meet ronda rousey last week super nice um i definitely get the feeling that she's an introvert so whatever it's the same with thing with jazzy yeah. it's whatever you see and you think that she is yeah it's total, totally not totally yeah, not of course so i mean um, i mean she doesn't like the kardashians so hey moving on <laughs> <laughs> um this is you know not 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 so great Moving news. Uh, WWE announcer has been uh, pinned for sexual harassment. So, you know, the whole Me Too movement that's been going on. And he actually just joined the roster. So, um, Jonathan Coach. So coach, um, He's denying claims that a former ESPN an- anchor uh, said he was notorious for sexually harassing women at the Sports Network. Mm, this is a rough one. I... They, I definitely love this whole Me Too movement going on, but there's a fine line between the people that are accurate and serious about these allegations and people that you may not be sure are telling the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think there's an inconsistency here. And I don't want to, like, call out this woman for, you know, her claims because they could very well be true. But um, in one of the reports I read, it alleged that this, you know, famed ESPN personality Chris Berman left a threatening and racially disparaging voicemail on an ESPN anchor and contributor, Jamil Hill's Which he phone, denied. Which he denied. Yeah. And this was a story coming from the woman that is making the lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So I thought that that was a major inconsistency and kind of is telling to are all these truths about Jonathan or accusations about Jonathan Coachman truths. Well, here's the thing, too. So with Jameel Hill, she's been in a lot of trouble over the last six months. Um, she had said some stuff on her social media um, about President Trump. She was, I believe, suspended for a little bit. I mean, there's, and not to say she's a troublemaker, she was just essentially expressing her opinion. Right. So whether, I mean, she doesn't seem like the type that would lie, but it's also, she's in almost this particular, like, peculiar position where it's like she doesn't need another, you know, Thing against ESPN or you know sh- being shown that she's not for the company she works for so but she could have said nothing well the well the co-worker who did it and put it in the the, the law report or whatever it was shouldn't have mentioned her name at all because mm-hmm. Jamil is not the one you know bringing up the charges so that was mm-hmm. a whole issue in itself and you're and I definitely agree with you it's kind of with the thing you the me too movements almost the same thing with you know um, affirmative, affirmative action and you know racial issues and stuff like that you have people saying oh well this is because it's this person's race and it might not be because of that and now we got to the point where we don't even want to listen to it so there's a lot of uh there's a lot of issues happening with there i don't i don't it's and you know he's been around for so long this guy um mm-hmm. coachman he yeah. was announcer in wwe in 1999 oh yeah left in 2008 and then went to ESPN 2008 to 2017 recently, mm-hmm. and then returned back to the Raw roster this year. Yeah. So he's um, been around for years. And then he's been yeah. doing the the shows too, the um, pay per view shows. Right. When he wasn't, when he wasn't, when he's with ESPN, he was doing the pay per view shows as well. Yeah. Right. I I read. Um, I forgot which uh, news outlet I read, but it stated that he right after he got fired from mm-hmm. ESPN. W, he went straight to WWE, like right after. 
Like, I don't, the, like right after. So I don't know if it's true, but also yeah, it's like, I don't think WWE would would um if he got fired for that particular incident, I don't think WWE would have hired him. Right. Yeah, and so, they're investigating yeah. the situation yeah. now, as we know. Um, but I don't know. It's it's kind of up in the air. I think until someone can prove that this is actually what happened, mm -hmm. nobody should lose their job until we have the facts right. straight. And yeah. it, it's so, and like, I'm all for the Me Too movement and like um, the other movements. I can't think, I can't think today, but. There's a lot of movements. There's a lot today. of movements going on. But it, it, at the end of the day, it's a he said, she said situation. Mm -hmm. Same thing with um, going a little off topic with Ryan Seacrest and the uh, comedian, um, I forgot his name. But um, they're getting, alle you know, those allegations, allegations are happening. Yeah. Which is crazy, too, with, yeah. with that whole, you know, Ryan Seacrest thing. There was people on the red carpet that didn't want to talk to him. Right. But then those same people were happy that Kobe, you know, got the Oscar, which I, I love the fact that Kobe got an Oscar. I don't think people should, you know, crucify him because it's something that, that happened, happened 16 years ago. Right. Um, but you know, it's almost like you have to remain consistent. If you're not going to, you know, mess Double with Ryan standard. Seacrest, then you shouldn't yeah. mess with anybody. And right. I think, like, if, if this person is lying, I think it's so sickening that they want to do this just because there's a movement going on. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of people today want that attention or right. to build their brand or audience or to be relevant again. And not to say that this woman is doing that, but if there are women out there doing that or people in other movements just creating attention mm -hmm. it's wrong because yeah. you are destroying someone's life yeah you really they're, are they're freaking gonna go to gloria estevan or whatever her name is what oh gloria all oh, oh, right it's like sorry yeah. what <laughs> estevan i'm like are they going to a concert i know that's what i was thinking i'm like wait well, what i mean the reporter the lady reporter. all red there actually yeah, is a documentary um, right now on netflix she's, all yeah red. oh she is really i need yes. to look that up it is so good netflix has so many shows i can't even keep up yeah um speaking of people that we can't even keep up with um so emma she was released from wwe um but she emma and james ellsworth was released from wwe they're actually going to be doing an intergender match for big time wrestling yeah. which i think it's gonna be really interesting like i mean out Ellsworth or James kind of played a really interesting role on WWE. Um, but have you seen, I haven't seen him like actually seriously fight. I have. You have yeah. at, um, was it Bar Wrestling? Bar Wrestling, yeah. Uh, so he brought the belt at Bar Wrestling. Mm -hmm. He faced um, Joey Ryan, who is pro, is the, one of the most famous independent wrestlers uh, right now. Mm -hmm. And he brought the belt with him. They were both wrestling. We were, I was just a little confused on why you're putting the title on the line against another guy. We thought it was an intergender thing. Right. Um, overall, James was so fun to watch. He got into the crowd. People were chanting disrespectful things to him, but he was also saying disrespectful things to everyone else. Uh, the gimmick was pretty much no chin. So they, it, it was such a good time. Seeing able, uh, being able to... Um, watch him in a different way and like instead of WWE so it's kind of it, it's different mm -hmm. and a, because you're so used to seeing him on WWE TV right but when you see him in independence no holds barred you do whatever the hell you want right so it's different the belt looked nice um what happened was I was talking to Joey after the show mm -hmm. um he was saying like oh we just did it for fun we didn't want to put it like we don't want to make bar wrestling as, hey, this is going to be titles. Everyone's right. going to get a title. But also, uh, Emma was there. I'm, I can't, I can't, um, I'm so used to calling her Emma. Tennille Dashwood. Tennille Dashwood. She was there, mm -hmm. killed it with Taya. They had a phenomenal match. And I cannot believe WWE did not use her as much because she is so talented. Right. Talented than some of the women on the women's roster. Way I think more everyone's talented. in shock by that. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. And, and it's sad because you you just wasted somebody who just <coughs> is gifted at this mm -hmm. and just seeing her just being seeing her in a different way was very good. Have any of you ever met Tennille Dashwood? Well I met her at Bar Wrestling. Well hopefully you actually we'll, met her? Well hopefully, I just said hi to her. <laughs> hopefully we'll be meeting her. I did send her an email for a request oh, okay. to come on the show. Oh so. good. Cross well, fingers. I almost wonder though, you know, what she's like in person because if WWE was willing to let someone like that go, who is at the top of her game and at the peak of her career, 
maybe there was something else going on. Maybe, maybe. they're not as easy to work with behind the scenes or things to that matter. So well, it would be interesting to yeah, find out. Well, I, well, I think the report said amazing. it's just more storyline. There was nothing for her. And that's what the same thing they said. I think it was the uh, um, same thing they said for Darren Young, too. They just didn't have a storyline. I don't know so, about Because she that. was yeah. amazing at, uh, in NXT. She, like, everyone yeah. praised her. But when she was on the main roster, it was like, oh, nothing. And from what I also read was they were with when they were trying to bring her back, that whole gimmick thing where it's mm -hmm. oh we're gonna bring Emma a whole new Emma I think they were trying to make her like a new sable or a new something and she was the one who couldn't do it and she, I think she said no like I'm not doing that well speaking of people who said no Paige she's saying no to all her haters people are saying that she gained too much weight she's going on uh, social media and saying pretty much um can't make everybody happy which I agree with Paige is I don't know what people are, are saying. She still looks gorgeous. She's dealing with a lot of stuff. So to kind of kick her when, you know, she's down saying all these negative things, I mean, I don't think is the, the right move to I go. I mean, but. first of all, how could you say anything to Paige or anyone for that matter? These girls are kicking butt in the ring. There's no reason for you to hate on one body type or the other. We see girls like Paige. We see girls like Summer Rae who are tall and skinny. We see girls like Nia Jax, who mm -hmm. are a little bit bigger and curvier. Who cares, as long as they're showing up and showing out. There we go. Freaking Speaking haters. of uh, showing Stop up and me. showing out, we have some women to watch. Who's the woman to watch this week? Well, actually more of women to remember because, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. The grand. I totally forgot about that. Um, second show, guys, give us a break. Um, so this person, uh, we gotta remember, for we're still going. <laughs> hey, it's second show. We're having a great time. Um, so this is a woman to remember. She passed away in uh, 2013, in the summer of 2013. She a uh, second generation superstar. She started wrestling um, in the 80s, became went into WWE in the 90s. She is... Um, Luna Vachon, someone who was strong, powerful. Uh, you could put her in the category of, of course, China and um, Nicole Bass. She had amazing feuds with Jacqueline, amazing feuds with Sable. She partnered with Goldust. Goldust, for some reason, is always with the blonde. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> she was one of them. And this is, I think that the way how talented she is her voice was very dark and unique and scrappy and scary mm. and that was something that you didn't have in the 90s it was it was overall as me watching her i was a little scared of her because i was like oh my gosh like this girl's crazy but watching her wrestle having the long braided blonde hair the toughness and the realness that she is she brought what women's wrestling is today. And she did definitely pave the way because without strong, powerful women like her, we wouldn't have a Beth Phoenix. We wouldn't have a Nia Jax. We wouldn't even have the alpha female Jazzy like, we, mm -hmm. like we're gonna be interviewing. So uh, rest in peace to Luna Vachon and she's definitely someone that needs to be in the Hall of Fame. Well, there you have it. Definitely, um, like you were saying, without her, we wouldn't have people like Jazzy Gaber, the alpha mm -hmm. female. We actually got a chance to interview her. We, she first, it's she's in Germany, so she woke up at midnight to talk to us. So we really appreciate that. And in order for her to do that, I just didn't want to be, you know, being a, at least accommodating to her. So we moved. We actually interviewed her first. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're gonna play next. But definitely, really great interview. I like to thank you guys all for uh, joining us. Hope you enjoy the news, all this good stuff. If you have any suggestions, all that good stuff, go on our social medias. We're gonna be talking about that all at the end, all that good stuff. But enjoy our interview with Jazzy Gabert. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. She is an MMA fighter. She has wrestled for Impact Wrestling and she was in the May Young Classic. Please welcome the one, the only, the alpha female, Jazzy Gaber. Hey, Jazzy. Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Hi. Hi, guys. Well, let me just let everybody know you are, you, I'm so thankful that it's midnight in Germany right now, right? Absolutely. But yeah. I'm a night person, so it's totally fine. So, oh. really, really, we really appreciate it because, you know, I know you're a night person, but, you know, it's still. A tall, tall task, tall task to ask for. But the first thing is, um, you did have that neck injury that um, happened in our, the neck injury operation in January. So how are you feeling right now? 
Uh, I'm okay. Um, I actually started training today and it went really good. My doctor say I should wait another two months, but you can't hold me down. I need to go now in the training and but it's going fine. I mean, you still can see the scar and I'm a little bit disappointed in how it looks, but it's all good. So it's safe to say, because I think in your last blog post, you were saying you didn't even know if you want to come back to wrestling. So is it safe to say that you're going to make that approach back? Because you were so close with the WWE and all this other stuff, so are you? Yeah, it's crazy. Like in one moment, everything can be gone, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to send my MRI and all the, you know, the medical stuff to the WWE doctors. And if they say you're good to go, I will give it, of course, another try. But to be honest, I'm not sure if I want to do independent wrestling anymore because, you know, I'm doing it since 17 years. And I kind of want to get somewhere and I don't know, with independent wrestling, it's very difficult. Wow. So do you feel like, you know, you're going to be sending this MRI to WWE soon to get that approval or, or uh, see, you know, where they stand in regards to your neck injury? Yeah, I'm going to wait maybe another two or three months just to heal it completely. Um, because right now, as I said, my doctor say wait a little bit longer. Um, I mean, everything is fine now. Like, I don't have any pain anymore. And, you know, I had like a little bit tingling in my fingers that's completely gone. And my full strength is back. So I think everything is all right, but you never know. Wow, that's actually a surprisingly quick recovery mm -hmm. for something so serious. I just went um, into surgery myself back in November for a septoplasty, which is pretty basic. It's a deviated septum, but I still feel like I'm struggling with that. And they say it's like a year healing process. So to hear that you had three herniated discs and you're already like bouncing back in training, I mean, that's just phenomenal. How do you feel, you know, getting back in the ring? Do you feel like you can do everything you were doing before the surgery? I have no idea to be honest. I mean, like, as I said today, I did my first kind of, you know, gym training and I was like really out of breath. So my stamina is gone for sure. And I need to build that up again. And, you know, I need to do more stretching again. And, you know, all the basic moves like rolling forward and backward, just not to get dizzy. So I still need to do that, but I'm confident in it. Uh, I spoke to other wrestlers who had the similar injury and they told me too that they needed one year, but I don't want to wait one year. I feel like I don't have one year, so... And well, I don't rush it. Like, I really feel ready, so it's okay. Well, the fact that you trained for six weeks and did a uh, MMA fight, I mean, I think you can do pretty much anything, so I think you'll definitely get back in less than a year. Now, did anybody from WWE contact you when they heard the news? Because you were, like, on your way to go to the Performance Center and they did the medical stuff. So did you hear from anybody from, you know, any of the wrestlers from May Young Classic or any of the, like, corporate heads? Did they contact you? So, so, I mean, I have some friends there um, and we're in, in contact and they're telling me, come on, we miss you here, get your ass over here. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in training and, you know, like, and I'm in contact with them and yeah, it's really encouraging. Like even like wrestlers, like, I don't know, like x -Pac or even TJ Wilson, uh, Natalie's husband, he wrote me and I'm like, wow, like so much support and even like. Christian and Ash, they're like still behind me. We texted just today and it's like so freaking awesome that all these people behind me. So I really have to get fit, right? So I don't want to disappoint <laughs> them. And, and you know, in the past, you've actually been known as the alpha female in the independent circuits. Um, you got that name because of Bully Ray. Do you feel like, you know, that alpha female character was inspired by the storyline that, you know, he had for you that you didn't necessarily agree with back then? Well, the name itself does not came from um, Bully Ray, but the look came from Bully Ray because, you know, he said, I'm not pretty enough. So I kind of, you know, I shaved my hair and I wanted to be ugly. Um, and that's how the alpha female, uh, the look came. But the name itself, it came back then from my boyfriend. He was also a wrestler and he was on the road and I was sitting at home. And he said to the other girls, oh, my girlfriend, she's jealous. And they're like, why is she jealous? She's the alpha female. And then we're like, wow, that's a pretty fitting name, you know? Wow, that's great. Oh, well, you are definitely beautiful as being an alpha female. Um, I do want to know is you've been in this business for so long. When you got the phone call of saying, hey, you want to do the Mae Young Classic, how did you get that phone call and what was that feeling at that time? Um, to be honest, I already thought I will not be in there because they already announced girls and I thought um, I'm not in it and like I was really about to give up because 
I didn't really like the MMA fighting. Like it's it's way too difficult for someone who just started new. There's girls that training since they're born, you know. So it's really difficult to go just in there. So I was really tired of fighting, and I was tired not getting to WWE with wrestling because that's my dream, and that was always the goal, you know. Like the MMA thing, it just happened. So when they already announced the girls, they're like, oh, I will not be in it. And it was really sad. And then three weeks before, they actually write me an email and they said, hey, we just want to check if you're available. And I'm like, yes, 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 I am. <laughs> um, and then they called me up and everything went so quickly with the visa and, you know, the, the travel arrangements. Everything was so quick. So I was super happy. Yes. And I also uh, want to know how and what inspired you to become an MMA fighter and then transition to a wrestler? No, I was before a wrestler, um, and it was because I saw Hulk Hogan, the Macho Man, the Warrior, and I loved the colorful work. Everything was so perfect, and everyone was so strong, and I just want to be a part of it. And the MMA happened because 2015, I was like coming home from Japan. I, was, I worked in Japan for like three, four years, and that ended, and I was like, ah, what do I do next? I did TNA already, you know, and I did the whole European thing. I did Japan, and I was like, what's next? Like, what can I do? And then someone called me and asked, do you want to fight MMA? And I thought, hmm, that's how I can show the world and WWE and everyone who doubt me that I can still learn something even in my, you know, I'm 35 now and still in my age, I can still learn something and I still can do something new. So that's why I went into MMA. Wow. Now, Jazzy, you're from Germany. Do you feel like it was a huge accomplishment for you to be able to work in wrestling in the United States or even in Japan for that matter? Oh, absolutely. I mean, in Japan, for example, I'm the only European woman who ever can win a Yoshi championship, you know, like a Japanese female championship. And that's like a huge deal for me and I guess for the wrestling world, too. Um, and also, it's really difficult to work in America. You know, you need a work visa. And that's why I never really get got there. And it was always my dream to work for like in America. So definitely it's a big achievement to do that. So in the Mae Young Classic, you were definitely a standout because um, we actually covered covered it at AfterBuzz Studios. So you were definitely a standout in it, and you know you got signed to that. Now you did try out for WWE a few times before the Mae Young Classic, and they didn't necessarily tell you what kind of what was the issue, why they didn't kind of sign you. So did you have a conversation with them? You know, obviously before the injury and before like all that stuff, as far as they were saying they loved like was that? Do you think it was the MMA stuff, or do you think what do you think? kind of package you together for them to say, okay, this is the time for you? Mm, I think there are just people and uh, how you can say, like people who look at you are different than the people who are actually in charge, you know? So I think maybe it was just too hard for me to get past these people because maybe they don't like me. I don't know. Like I talked to some people, but they they just gave me the answer, you know, the past is the past. So you're here right now and we move on from here. And I guess that's the best answer I can get. and. I try to give my best, you know, and uh, as you hear, Triple H was really uh, impressed with me, and I hope that I can still impress him in future, whatever I do, you know, um, but that was for me, like, like, I knew this is my only chance I have, like, that was my thing, and I knew I have to give everything, and I did, you know, and it worked out, and I was really happy, and I actually thought the first match I had at the Mayan Classic uh, was Abby Lee, I really thought okay this is my only match i will have here so i wanted to enjoy it the most and i wanted to give as much alpha female as i could give you know and i was really surprised that i had the second day another match and they were so surprised about the reaction from the fans like couldn't believe it i still can't believe it now standing back there before you're about to head out to the ring what was kind of going through your mind the first match yeah I was super nervous, but I'm always nervous before the match. Um, <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. It can be like a small show where it's just 100 people or it can be 20,000 people. I'm always nervous. Um, and it was the same, but as soon as my music hits, or even like the five minutes before, it's like a demon came over me, but I said it already in the interview. It's really weird. Like, it's not me, Jazzy. It's more like the alpha female. And then all thoughts are gone, and I just go out there and I just do my stuff. 
That's really great. Do you feel like you identify with who your character is? I know that you were telling us a story earlier of how the name came about and your boyfriend brought it up. Um, do you feel like you identify with those characteristics when you're in the ring and out mm, of the ring? Like, I always say that my real life character is nothing at all like the alpha female, but from time to time I had to change into the alpha female. So now, like as the years goes by, I'm even in my private life more confident, you know, and, and more stronger and all that positive thing what the alpha female has. But unfortunately also like the, I would not say negative, but like alpha female is not really feminine, you know, like she's a really strong character and she, um, is, yeah, she's like not feminine and some people really don't like that and especially in a dating game um, <laughs> it's together, you know, I'm single right now so it's really hard to get like a partner or find someone because I'm too much of the alpha female if that makes any sense but whenever someone comes up and say hi, I'm really in love with the alpha female she's so freaking hot I'm like, wow, like no, no way. Like, I don't fear personally think that when I'm the wrestling character, alpha female, that I'm dating material. <laughs> <laughs> well, that other boyfriend is long gone now, right? Oh, yeah, long gone, eight <laughs> years ago. <laughs> now, you did mention, so I, I kind of almost feel like the alpha female was in, in your blood, because in previous interviews, you talked about how you were adopted, and they really wanted a girl, and you, it sounded like you were more of that tomboy type thing, type, type, type person. So it feels like this is, you know, who you, you know, I'm, I'm a tomboy too, I'm guessing, yeah, most of us are. So it kind of feels like, she's like, yeah, whatever. Um, it kind of, it kind of feels like that's been in your DNA. So do you feel like now you're just comfortable with, you know, the, just almost taking that personality, like the alpha female, and it's kind of always been with you? I guess, I mean, I think a little bit, I have a split personality because I really love unicorns and pink and, you know, all that cute stuff. I love wearing dresses, you know, but whenever I show up like this on the events, the fans are like, what is this like you're not the alpha female and I'm like yeah or like one day i was uh, invited to a, a show it was like a tv show and they wanted me as the alpha female like a really bad character but i turned up as jazzy like in a dress and really nice polite and with makeup and then i see that the producer he's like something is wrong and i'm asking him hey sir what's wrong and he's like ah oh, please don't take it personal i really like you you're a nice girl but i expected something different and i said to him wait wait till i put my makeup on and put the camera <laughs> on, then you will see and then snap he was so happy for alpha female <laughs> that's so great yeah. um we have there's so many women in the wwe and outside the wwe that are so strong and so powerful is there anybody that you want to face in the ring one day of course, Ronda Rousey is a big hit, but we have someone like Nia Jax who, that I think you could go one-on-one -on -one with. Yeah, I, I really like Nia Jax, but more my most favorite wrestler I want to face is, and I want to have great matches with Kairi Sane. Um, I had many great matches in Japan with her, so I know when we can go to WWE, we can, we can deliver and really show the fans real female wrestling, you know, and yeah, I want to wrestle Sasha Banks and I want to team up with Bailey's. You know, there's so many potential and I'm really excited for the women's division right now. It's like a great job they did and the girls doing really, really well. So pretty much if you go to WWE and they bring you to the main roster, you're going to be on Raw because yeah. <laughs> all those people are on Raw. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> well, so, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. They might switch up. Now, if you, um, you know, let's say you sent the MRI, WWE is like, wait a few more months, or, you know, they give you another answer that you weren't expecting. Is there any other game plan that you would do next if it wasn't, you know, WWE? Yeah, I really want to do movies. Like, movies is like my next big passion. Um, I did already a few, but just little things, but I really want to go in there. And I think with the whole wrestling thing, I do have some acting experience, you know, and I really want to do it. But of course, I understand I have like this special look and, and there must be special movies, you know, like, oh my God, you know what would be awesome if they do like a Rocky in the female version and I yes, would like yeah. the Dolphin wow. <laughs> That would be really yeah. cool. Yeah, that yeah, promo that you did with um, uh, Gabby Garcia, um, mm -hmm. right? That was that was next next level. And I know um, you know MMA is a whole different beast, but you know you you might want to kind of still brush up on that. She trains like a beast. I mean, to be honest, I must have respect for this woman. I mean, I feel a little bit sorry because something can't be clearly right with her. Like 
who would train like insane but don't take serious fights you yeah know? she's taking this ridiculous fight against grant mars and i'm really sorry for her because she trains really hard and i see her every day on my instagram but then again like i really want to face her and when i challenged her i knew that i can beat her but she improved she improved a lot and her kicks are crazy so i don't know like i still want this challenge but i have to train hard to you know to have like a fair chance i don't want to go in the ring and knew that i will lose you know like if i go in the ring i will have a, a maybe a one percent chance to win right and what does your training consist of now to kind of get back into, you know, wrestling ring shape? Yeah, right now I do like in the morning I do jogging um, or like fast walking because I can't, you know, like bounce with the snack at the moment. And I do like, um, you know, like all the exercises in the gym, but it's not so heavy weights. So I need to, I need to slow down. Like I want to go really heavy, but I know it's not good. So I need to really go slow. And yeah, and I think in about three months, um, I'm going to do boxing again because that's good for stamina and mm -hmm. that's good for the all over um, training. Um, yeah, and then step by step building so, up my training. And then when do you think you can take your first bump again? Have they kind of given you that or it just depends on how you feel? I, I guess how I feel. Like I talked to another wrestler who had exactly the same um, situation with the neck and he told me that he could train like bodybuilding after six months and after one more six months, like all 12 months, um, he could go in the ring. But I have already a booking in May, so in three months. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> but what, where's your booking in May? It's in Germany, and it's about it's against a celebrity girl. So Ooh. I know, you know, she cannot bump me. So that would yeah. be <laughs> is oh this a celebrity God. in Germany or a celebrity we would know? No, she's a celebrity in Germany, but maybe you guys know her too. She's always getting naked, so maybe she's. <laughs> <good>. <laughs> you might know her. Sounds That's like funny. America's DNA. <laughs> All right, so and now like, the wrestling fans are really mad. Like I get lots of messages from wrestling fans that say they're, they're not going to buy tickets and they're really disappointed. And I totally can understand because the wrestling involved so much for the females that this is absolutely not, you know, imaginable that a girl like the celebrity girl just go in the ring without any training. And I can understand that people are like disappointed. But on the other side, we have to think this girl, she will bring us some mainstream, you know, like Attention, publicity. Yeah. We really need that. Right. And then going back to your working out and your routine, when you're really in the ring and, and you don't have an injury going on, what kind of workout regimen do you have to do to keep up every week, you know, in between touring or having a rough schedule? Yeah. Um, just right before I stopped doing this, um, I had to do training three times a day. In the morning, I had to go um, in the training and do like, um, how you say, like crabbling and, you know, like boxing techniques. And then in the midnight and like midday, like 12 or 1 p.m., um, I had to go running or sprinting. And then in the nighttime, six o'clock, we had to do sparring. Uh, wow. It was like crazy schedule. And on the weekends, I went to the wrestling shows, and I can remember my trainer, he always yelled at me on Monday because I was so tired. <laughs> he was like, why are you so tired? <laughs> but one time, I bring him to a wrestling weekend. I say, look, you need to see what I'm doing, actually, on the weekend. And he's like a UFC MMA fighter, and that's the first time when he watched wrestling, because before, he always like, ah, wrestling, that's not playing, especially in Germany. How good can it be, right? And then we brought him to a wrestling show, Dub XW Germany, and he was so impressed. He was like, oh my God. And he were actually like, oh my God, that must hurt so much. And I was like laughing, my, I was laughing so hard. And then he said, okay, I understand why you're Monday so tired. Uh, yeah, well, that's usually how it happens and how you convert someone over to being a fan when they know nothing about, yeah, what's going on in the ring and what you are dealing with. Um, so you mentioned you do three workouts a day. So you're not doing two a days, you're doing three a days, which is incredible. Badass. How many hours are you working out each time, you know, um, on those three different times of day? Yeah, in the morning is like one and a half hour. The jogging and sprinting is one hour, and then the sparring is like two hours. Oh my goodness. So you probably have to eat like crazy in order to keep up with your protein intake because you're burning so much with those three workouts. I love to eat. And that's, that was the problem. Now after surgery, I still eat the same amount, but now I, I gained like big time and I'm like super not happy. Um, <laughs> but, uh, 
like I said, I'm like, how you say in English? I don't know. Like I'm a bulking thing, you know, like the bodybuilder. Oh, right. bulking. bulking, yeah. <laughs> bulking <laughs> so I season. Say this all the time. But <laughs> um, everyone is like, Jazzy, you need to lose some weight. I'm like, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> now you mentioned that um, in previous interviews that you wanted, you kind of wished for a trainer who had experience with WWE or who has been in the WWE. Is there anybody that, you know, if you can wave your magic wand that you would like to, like, would want them to be your trainer or train you? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, I, I never met Shawn Michaels, for example, in real life, but now after the Mae Young Classic, I met him like in, at the Mae Young and I was so fascinated with him, and this would be like my ultimate dream if he's like my trainer. But I, mean, I wish that was like 10 or 20 years ago, you know, that he was my trainer, or you know, like someone like Edge, like Edge was super nice to me, and he totally couldn't understand who, who I am, you know, and I really wish I had someone like him. But it is what it is, I say, and I, I still got there, you know? Like, I think if you're really stubborn and if you really want it and if you really put everything you have in it, you still can do it, no matter the odds, you know? And now, kind of take us back. So we kind of, we're no, we know you, you did the, you're, you had the injury, you had the operation, you're training back to get in the ring. Um, now, take us back to like the beginning. So you, you were adopted and you said, you've mentioned on several interviews that kind of wrestling saved your life. So, so for people yeah. who haven't like, you know, don't know, cause I wasn't familiar with you until I saw the Mae Young Classic and then I'm like, oh my God, this, you're amazing. So kind of take it for people who didn't get to see you Mae Young Classic or who don't, you know, necessarily know of you, but they don't know your story. So kind of take us from the beginning. All right, so my story is um, I was found in front of a church and I got like a really stupid name. Um, my real name is not Yezzy. My real name is Marie Christine, like Marie and like Holy Maria and Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when six years old, I got adopted in this family and they had three boys and they wanted a girl so badly. But, you know, because of the life in the in the foster home and the new boys really hated me because, you know, the parents really, um, they don't want them. So they treated them really bad. So now I came in and the first two years, they spoiled the hell out of me. They gave me everything I wanted. Um, but the brothers hated me. So I had to fight with the boys all the time. And then, you know, all the time fighting, you know, people were screaming. And then I found wrestling um, was 10 years old. And then they had another girl. When I was 10, they had another girl and they loved her completely. And she was everything they wanted. Um, so I found wrestling because that was like a perfect world. And when I was 13, the parents got divorced and I had to go with my mother and my little sister to, Ger uh, to Berlin back where I was born. And yeah, and then they found the wrestling school and yeah and then i trained like crazy my mother really didn't like that she said i have to choose wrestling or her and of course i choose wrestling so oh, she wow. kicked me out um but yeah, what does she I say thought, now that you're you know doing so many things we're not in contact anymore like mm -hmm. like i would forgive her like if she would come here to me and say hey i'm sorry i, I messed up i would totally forgive her but unfortunately i think she's sick like sometimes i talk with my brother because now me and my brother one of them we get really good along and you know a funny story is um like as i said my mother she always wanted girls right and one of my brother who doesn't speak to his mother now because of course they treated her him so bad too he has seven girls now oh, wow. seven wow. daughters <laughs> Imagine. that's nice so now um so you did you, you chose wrestling over your mother and then you yeah. kind of you started wrestling you went to the wrestling school and then what happened yeah well with the wrestling school it was not easy also like we speak about 17 years ago like there was not the time of the internet like so big like, as it is now like there was no facebook there was no twitter um and i was like one of three girls um and it was really hard you know like they beat the hell out of me and the first i remember the first six months they didn't told me about k faith and I really had no clue about K-Fape. I always thought wrestling is real. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, but I go home crying, but I come back next day and train and train. But then after, I think five years, I met my boyfriend back in the days. And, you know, he showed me how real life is, how real training is and that training don't have to be so hard. And then from there on, the alpha female was born. And yeah, I toured around the world and I became successful. Wow. Do you think your background and, and where you came from and the experiences you had as a child made you this strong alpha female today? 
you know what? I'm watching a lot of Tony Robbins, and he's like my yes. guru. <laughs> <laughs> I really love him, and I learn a lot from him. And this is like my thing, like my hobby, basically. I try to, you know, self heal me. And when I like when I was younger. I of course had a lot of issues, you know. Like if you get rejected from your real parents, then you get rejected from your, yeah, fake parents. I don't know how you say. And you know, you always get rejected. And then also in the wrestling school, first they didn't want me, so you get again rejected. And then you go to the WWE trial, then you get rejected. Like it really messed with my head. But then I went to Japan in 2012, and I found totally peace. Like I started meditating, and I started to do, you know. Self healing things, and yeah, I'm okay now. And but I know for sure that the whole story made me strong, gave me like a strong character. And I think if I had loving parents, if I had like everything perfect, I would not be the person who I am today. That is the truth. And now, how do you handle rejection today? I say, well, it's their fault because I know I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> do you actually? You, it, it's almost persistence too, because I, there was a story. I think you, when you, I think it was the boxing, or uh, not the the wrestling club in Germany. They first told you no, and didn't you yeah. go to the trainer's house that day or that night consistently for a few weeks? Yeah, I did, and I, I begged them, and then finally they said yes. Um, but just to take my money, you know, and and as I, as I said, they beat me up like all the time And I remember I had to be like a dummy for them and one time I had like a really messed up face because a boy He you know by mistake he jumped in my face and it was horrible But again, it teached me, you know how to not do wrestling I guess I always say that but now you know like the, the team we're okay you know I wrestled for them again and, and we're okay I mean we were young you know I was like 18 19 years old and my parents never showed me anything about life they never talked to me you know and in school I was always sleeping because I, res I watched wrestling at night time so I was really yeah I would say retarded <laughs> so <laughs> so you really are a night owl <laughs> Yeah, that's for sure. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I wouldn't use the word retarded. I would say that you you were persistent. You knew what you wanted, and you were consistent about it. Because if you were you know if you were that word, then you wouldn't be where you are right now. And you know you would have had the operation, and you would have been, you would have been like you would just kept on eating. I don't know what's your favorite food. Oh my God, you got me by surprise. <laughs> I thought my favorite. Food. I want to say pancakes, but I'm not allowed to, I guess. So steak. <laughs> so you would have kept on eating steak and pancakes, and, you know, you would have gave up. So, you know, this is this is definitely shown of a true alpha female. You're persistent on everything that you do. So, I mean, kudos to that. My story, my story makes kind of sense, and I really need to go to that, baby. I think so, because I want to have my story perfectly make sense. I want to go after my wrestling career and after my big movie career. I want to be like a you know go to schools and talk and I want to speak to young kids who think that they are treated unfair because life is not fair and sometimes parents cannot be the perfect parents you know and I want to say to these kids that doesn't matter like if you have a good education if you have the perfect parents or not you know it's still up to you what you do out of it you know there's so much more stuff in my closet and I write a book actually and you will read it um, but I think whatever happens to you, you still have a choice to get out of there and of course I cannot say I will make it or not like it's not in my hand but I will not give up you know and I hope I can get it and I really hope that I can inspire some people to try to well, I yeah. could tell you, you've inspired all of us here mm -hmm. on our panel at After Buzz. Yes, and you should not give up because you are an amazing person and super talented. No matter those, you know, days where you're feeling down or you deal with rejection because you're the true example of someone who keeps fighting and is a warrior. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank yeah. you. And then for sure, too, what do you say? Um, I just want to say that your chocolate is very good. I've, I have a family member who's from There's... Germany and she would bring chocolate here in America and it's like, delicious but um you talk about how you want Shawn michaels or edge to train you uh one day and i believe that one day will happen for you when you're done with your wrestling career do you think that you would want to open up a wrestling school in germany for for women no i don't know training is just not my thing i mean i get asked many times to do training seminars but i don't know it's just not in my blood i i don't know i can't do it like <laughs> I feel personally that I do also many mistakes myself, you know, and I'm not like super technical and there's still a lot to learn from me and 
I don't know. I don't want to teach something wrong, you know. And I don't know. I don't have the eye for a specific thing. I think there are a lot more better people out there who can train young people. Now, for sure, I mean, we definitely hope that you're going to make it back into uh, the ring, especially for WWE. But we also, well, I, I think I see a career for you as a superhero, like just an action hero, because you you're just badass. So you can you already can kick people. I mean, you already can beat them up in real life. So I mean. <laughs> Just kind of definitely, I hope that for you too, because we definitely want to see you on that big screen. Other than that, do you guys have any more questions? Or are you guys good? No, just the fact that I think you're amazing and yeah. you're super humble. Something we would have never expected probably looking at you in the ring. You seem so strong and, and fierce, but you're such a nice person. So thank you for yeah. making the time to and talk to yeah, us Yeah, thank today. you again. And also thank you for telling us your story as well as being one of the women to empower of women wrestling and making it what it is today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Your nice words. No. <laughs> and now, where where can everybody find you? Just in case they're not following uh, you, you guys should. You guys can find me on Facebook, Jazzy Gobbert, or on Instagram, German Wrestling, and on Twitter, Alpha Female One. I also do like a little comic figure, like it's a comic for Alpha Females. So the little comic is reliving the things what I did in real life. Uh -huh. So that's also on Twitter and Instagram for Jazzy Gobbert. So if you want to follow that, it would be nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. And are you um, updating your YouTube page with your journey, your journey kind of back to the ring? I should, right? You should. Yes. <laughs> You should. Yeah. That would be an amazing story just for everybody to watch. I will be next week in Florida in West Palm Beach doing some, um, you know, just holidays, relax, and I will put out the camera oh, for nice. sure. Yeah, right. Yes. We'll, well if you ever, that. yeah, if you ever come to LA, please let us know. We'll love to have you in studio. But I wish. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm on my way. <laughs> cross, cross fingers. But thank you so much for coming on the show. Like I said, I know you are a night owl, but I definitely, you know, want you to, to know that we definitely appreciate you for, you know, doing this because midnight is still. And it's tough. probably later than that now. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And you look beautiful at midnight because I sure don't look that cute <laughs> at midnight. So we really, really appreciate you. Thank you to the listeners, to all the fans. And yeah, thank you so much for following this. And you guys, thank you so much for doing this because without you, we would not exist, I think. Thank Aww, you. Thank, thank you, you, Jazzy. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for hopping on with us. That was an amazing interview. Yes, I love her already. Like next time she's in LA, she has to call us up. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, follow on on everything. I'm gonna be stalking her page for sure. But that is it <laughs> for our show. We guys, we definitely appreciate you guys for tuning in episode two. Mm -hmm. We have a few more guests booked. Um, oh my gosh, some really exciting guests. I'm really excited about some of, some of these people or all these people in general. But where can everybody find you ladies? Oh, yeah, you could follow me on social media at Anissa Bar with three R's at the end. Um, the Mixed Match Challenge, I am the lead host for that, so tune on in. We're, we're, it's almost, what, not this week, but next week we're going to be doing the Mixed Match Challenge. I am the social media correspondent for Xbox 12360. Follow me, and you'll follow everything else I do in life. And you guys could follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Gabby Loren TV, which is G A B B Y L O R E N T V. And you can also check out the link to my YouTube channel through my Instagram. It's linked to the bio. So hope to see you guys on there. And if you haven't already, please follow us on uh, AfterBuzz TV on all social medias. Um, definitely AfterBuzz TV Wrestling and Sports. If you haven't, I'm, I mean, you're watching this, so I think you have. But click, click subscribe for sure. iTunes five stars are better. And also on our Instagram page and our social media for Women's Pro Wrestling at WPW Weekly. We just started, so we're gonna have a lot of stuff coming, you know, for you. I'm, uh, you're, I'm, yep, yep, I'm doing all. Just that in case fun you guys stuff. didn't know, or you didn't know, I'm like you are a social media correspondent. Yes, I am the social media correspondent for <laughs> for everything. <laughs> just so really appreciate it. Um, other than that, you guys can find me on everything at TK Trinidad. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Ciao. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only. Do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.